Hi, I'm Casey. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. I am a 30-year-old Massachusetts woman who is makeup obsessed. I now live in South Georgia, <laughs> um, and I'm also a recovering addict. I've been clean about two and a half years almost. Um, God willing, I will have two and a half years in August. Um, but basically, I love anything indie. Indie has my soul. Um, but anything literally that has sparkle and color and pizzazz and bougie extra like craziness, like spooky stuff too, that's me. I am definitely a mixed bag for sure, but I love to review makeup and especially my little raccoon heart loves indie stuff and multi-chromes. So if you are a little raccoon at heart too and you want to stick around to see what I like, what I'm into, um, you can hang out and grab a snack and I'm going to be doing a ranking video today. So roll the footage. All right. So let me just preface this and say, I love all these palettes. Everything I've tried in 2022, I have thoroughly enjoyed. I am leaving out a handful of palettes that are nice palettes the product is really nice um but there's a lot of stuff going on on social media right now um if you're in the indie beauty community you're already gonna know what i'm talking about um but i'm not gonna get into it so just know i did you know try a few palettes from this particular brand that's under fire right now um i did enjoy them the product is really good but there's a lot of drama going on right now and you know um i'm not okay with supporting the brand right now so but I just wanted to be transparent I did leave out a couple palettes but anyway all of these palettes that I've tried are pretty much like stuff I reach for all the time if not um at least they stay kind of in my like everyday palette stash because I have a lot of makeup I hundreds of palettes and there's like uh, probably like 50, 60 palettes to the right of me over here that don't leave that little cart that they're in little caddy. They have a cart and a caddy <laughs> and they don't move. They stay right within reach so I can just roll my cart over and pick something for the day. Um, so yeah, these are 20 things that I've tried. I went back through my shop history, um, my little tracking thing for my online orders, and this is all stuff that I've tried in 2022. So, shit, I forgot about some ColourPop palettes. Ooh, hold on, real quick, I gotta add those in. Alright, so, I forgot about those ColourPops, but they're not indie, so I mean, but I have tried them in 2022, so they're gonna be honorable mentions. Um, basically, these could kind of go anywhere on the list but um because I enjoyed the quality in either of them so I guess number 22 whatever will be the lust to dusk palette um very neutral it is a 16 pan very like mauvey warm tone palette but I saw this in the store many many times before I bought it when I was at Ulta um and I decided to pick it up because I liked the um, assortment of cool and warm tones in here. Plus, it has a couple sequin shades, and I just wanted some new eyeshadow that day, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. But the shimmers are really nice, the mattes are nice, and I love sequin shades. I don't care what anybody says, those are some of my favorites. Um, I don't know why everybody hates them, but the, it, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I, I don't care. So, anyway, that's number 22, honorable mention, Lust to Dust. Now, 21 would be a very new palette. This is the Star Wars collab, um, and, like, can we just give ColourPop, like, ColourPop pretty much always kills their packaging. Their color story is not always so much, but, like, their formula, I feel like they have a few different formulas, but this was, like, the really, really amazing ColourPop formula. I mean, again... We have a couple sequin shades, um, or maybe one, 
yes, one sequin, and then we have some really, really pretty shimmers and some very pigmented mattes. Um, I think they did a really good job on this color story, kind of, you know, um, exemplifying, if that's the right word, um, Star Wars and like old school Star Wars. Because I haven't seen any new Star Wars. I, you know, I'm sorry. Don't want to offend anybody, but it just doesn't do it for me. Um, I'm more of a horror girl. Horror and comedy. All right, so I'm going to put these palettes back down on my car. And we're going to get into the actual list. So, number 20 is Unearthly Strawberry Milkshake. Great palette. Um, nothing wrong with it. It's just a color story thing. Um, these are all colors I reach for, um, probably with the exception of pink, because I really don't wear a ton of pink, especially not on its own, um, but I, I love green. Green's probably one of my favorite colors, and red. Green and red are probably two of my favorite colors to wear for eyeshadow. So, beautiful palette. It's a 9 pan with, let's see, one sequin, four mattes, and four shimmers. So, beautiful color story. Nothing wrong with the quality. Um, they reformulated a ton of their old palettes and repackaged them with their new name because they had to rebrand their formerly Alien Cosmetics. Um, so they went through that and, you know, that was a newer palette or a newer version of an older palette. And then you're going to see a couple of those in this ranking. Anyway, next one, number 19, is also an Unearthly palette. And that is a new palette. Um, this came out around February. This is the Sleepover palette. You're going to see a little bit of a theme, I think. But again, beautiful quality. Nothing wrong with the palette. Love it. It's just a lot of pink. So, I don't know. Right now, I'm just not in a pink phase. I just, you know... I'm not really sure, but I always feel like something's missing when I have, like, a just pink eye look. I pretty much always think something's missing when I have a monochromatic look anyways, which I gotta get out of, because they always look really nice. So, but anyway, 9 pin, um, 1 sequin, um, 1, 2, 3, 4 mattes, and 4 shimmers. And the shimmers are gorgeous in here. Like, even the ones that are more like a traditional shimmer, is like that shade right there, is really pretty. So, um, can't go wrong with this palette. It's just like, I, like the ranking, they have to go somewhere. So, oh well. Um, number 18, we're going to go to a different brand right now. And this is another one of my favorite brands, Adept Cosmetics. And this is the Ninhydrin palette. This is an older palette. I lusted after this lady, guy, whatever you want to call it, um, for quite a while. And I finally got it this year. Um, cause I, I'm just a collector and I was trying to pretty much complete my lineup of Adept palettes. So I have all of them now, um, except for the Plain Jane Remastered, but I have the original. So even though there's different shades, I don't really feel like I need it. So either way, this is the color story. It's got two mattes and the rest are really pretty, shifty, sparkly, gorgeous shades. Um awesome packaging like adept always kills their packaging this is older so like you'll see um the newer packaging on the adept palettes i kind of like it a little better um i'm not really sure if you get more product than this or if you get more product than that but really i don't care because i never paint eyeshadows but anyway that's number 18 and that's an hydrant and she's going back where she belongs on Part. All right, so number 17, we're swinging back to Unearthly for a minute, and this is another old palette, but an even formulated old palette, Fairy Frolic. This is a really, really pretty color story. Um, the only thing with this is that there's not really much shiftiness going on, except for maybe the exception of that shade and possibly Fairy. Fairy has a little bit of purple to, like, pink like that kind of mauve to like a lilac like it has reflex in it but it's not really like a shift and then this shade here mystical moss also has like almost like a brownie blue kind of base i want to say but it's a green shade so again one two three four mattes five shimmers nine pan from unearthly beautiful quality just a color story thing basically so that is number 17. 
All right, so we're gonna go to a different brand entirely, and that is number 15. And that is Glaminatrix. And that is Silent Night, or this is Silent Night. This is an eight pan little palette, and I'm not gonna hold it open like that because A, I have to pull back the mirror, but B, like their shadows are a little fragile, but they're fucking beautiful. Like their shadows are really beautiful. Absolutely. And you can see there's literally sparkles everywhere. I, I wasn't cleaning my palettes. I'm sorry. I'm not that bougie. I like things to look nice, but once they get to a point where every time you use it, if the shimmer is flaky, it kind of goes everywhere. I'm not going to mess with it unless it's affecting other shadows, which I just blow it off if I need to use the mattes. So we have four mattes, four shimmers, and these two are really multi-chromatic. This is a lot like Cosmos from Terra Moons, one of my favorite shades. Um, and then Fairy Lights is like a pinky, white, kind of greeny, orangey almost, like iridescent. It's a white, but it has reflex, you know. Um, in it, so maybe more of like a duo chrome kind of goldy white, but it's beautiful. And I love my Glaminatrix palette. And then we're gonna go to number 15, which is Whistler Snow Lodge from Nomad Cosmetics. And she is also a beaut. This is a very like winter, you know, not that I'm somebody that gives a, a damn about seasonal makeup. But this just makes me, like, think of winter. You know, you have the blue, you have that white with the pink. Like, you can't, the light's washing it out. But Powder Specialist is a really pretty shade. Okay, so you can see the shift there. Really pretty shade. Um, I love Nomad's formula. It's probably not my top favorite formula, but it, it's up there. It's it's a nice formula. I just sometimes feel like the mattes can be like... I mean, I feel like they did something with this palette differently. Like, they amped up the pigment. Um, but sometimes in, like, some of the older palettes, the mattes can be a little thin. And I find that trying to get them the way that I want them sometimes can result in a tiny bit of patchiness. But maybe that's just operator error or my technique. So... You know, it is what it is. But I don't want to say anything to, like, the detriment of the palette because the palette's really pretty. And I think they've definitely, you know, reformulated a little bit because this seems to be really, really good quality. Um, I gotta hurry up and get their other palettes because I've been dying to get the Haunted one from last year. And I just, you know, it sucks because it's like whenever I have the money, I want to order it. But then there's always, like, oh, there's a new release, so... You know, it's like, do I want to order an older palette or do I want to order, you know, a newer one? But really, it's just anything's going to be new to me. So, whatever. But we're going to segue into number 14, and that is a, like, five and a half or six pan um, from Odin's Eye. Another one of my favorite indie brands. This is the Erd palette, which this is a um, mini palette from the Norns collection, and I was trying to remember which one I think this was like the past because it was like past present future I think correct me if I'm wrong or don't actually I, I, it's okay it doesn't matter but um yeah this is a beautiful green color sorry very green heavy this shadow is beautiful these two shimmers are gorgeous we have a um, sequin right here and then these two mattes like this color story is so pretty. Like, I could make so many different looks just out of this little, like, five, six pan, whatever you want to call it, five and a half, you know, <laughs> whatever. But even with just this little, this little palette, like, you can achieve some really, really beautiful looks. So, very much. Um, they have one of my favorite formulas, for sure, because their mattes are just, like, chef's kiss, and their shimmers are always so sparkly, so... Anyway, we're going to go back to a brand we've seen a few times, and we're going to go to number 13 with the Lore Palette. Another oldie but a goodie, but I have the reformulated version that says Unearthly, because I got this, like I said, within, you know, the last six months. Um, and, ooh, sorry about the mirror. Um, this is a beautiful five shimmer. 
three matte and one sequin. And these two are similar, but not the same. This shade Basilisk, I think. Yes, Basilisk. Ba you know what I just said. It's beautiful. This guy down here, um, Medusa, is beautiful. And so is the other shade Griffin. It's a beautiful bronze, like sparkly, chocolatey, like caramelly shade. And it's gorgeous. And I love this color story. Another grungy color story that I gravitate towards quite a bit. So, and that's why it's in the place. So, so number 12 is a, another unearthly palette. Um, I think you can tell that I love unearthly. Most of my videos have been about them because they're one of my favorite brands. Um, but number 12 is the newest palette with mattes in it. And that is the leather and lace palette. This one is a 12 pan, which this is like my sweet spot, 12 to 18. 12 to 18 is like my perfect, like just enough to have so much variety while also still being curated. It's like, bam, you got neutral for color lovers and color for neutral lovers. Does that, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's what the owner Amanda had said about this palette. Um, and I definitely agree. Like we have three gorgeous shimmers and then six mattes. No. Nine mattes. Oh my lord. <laughs> you know, math was not my subject. I was like an art and English kid. But yeah, this is a beautiful palette. I'm moving it around like a weirdo so you can see. Um, they're not like the shiftiest shades, but like the reflex in, oh my god. That shade, Chantilly, so gorgeous. Like... All right, so we are pretty close now. We got one more, and then we're in the top 10. So number 11. This is a newer brand to me. Um, I have a couple of their palettes and one on the way. It actually should be here in the next day or so. Um, this is Notoriously Morbid Pretty Poison. This is a 9-pan all-shimmer palette. And something about Notoriously Morbid, and I blame my friend Katie. It's her fault getting me hooked on this brand um something about this formula is just different in the best way like I don't know any other brand that formulates their shadows and they're handmade um according to notoriously mob oh my god I can't talk notoriously morbid notoriously morbid okay I can't talk um they're handmade according to them and this is an all shimmer palette, and oh my lord, can we talk about sparkle? Like, and you can't even really see that. Okay, now you can. Look at the sparkles in that shade. Like, that's such a different shade. Like, some of these shades, yeah, I have some similar, but, like, the way it's formulated and the, like, the, um textures and the, like, just different formulas, like, it's just different and that's so great because there's such an oversaturated market these days that it's like you know bring something else to the table you know um, a lot of these brands like you get a, an all shimmer palette and you have dupe upon dupe you know what I mean if you have a big collection you have dupes you know what I mean most likely so like this type of formula is just a plus plus so and I love their mats too and you're gonna see that because there's another notoriously morbid in the ranking so anyways <laughs> not to spoil anything but all right so we are now in the top 10 number 10 is gonna be one of the newest palettes in my collection and that is the Sandra Rose mini and this along with another Glaminatrix palette that is also in this ranking is what's on my eyes today so anyway this is the gorgeous Sandra Rose mini this was an old palette that Kayla the owner of the Australian indie brand Glaminatrix decided that people were really upset that they weren't able to get it so she decided to bring it back changed a couple of shades around and made a mini um, because it was more cost effective and I was so 
freaking happy when she announced that she was going to do this because I was one of those people that was like kicking myself for not discovering Glaminatrix sooner. So I'm very grateful for that. Anyways, number nine, back to Notoriously Morbid, is the Rose from the Dead palette. Now, not a typical color story that I would gravitate towards on its own, and I will show you why. But it makes some of the most beautiful looks. Easy, gorgeous, but still with so much pizzazz looks. Uh, this is again I don't want to hold this um, like straight up and down because the shadows especially the shimmers are very crumbly but can we talk about the sparkle in that like hello and you have some sequin ish type they, no, maybe you don't I don't know I thought there was a sequin in this but I guess not um, but yeah, we had, I guess, shimmers and a 12 pan with shimmers and mattes. I'm not going to count them anymore. I'm sorry. I've done a little bit too much counting already, and I clearly can't math, so. But yeah, like, I love that shade, and that shade's my other favorite. That's definitely the star. But the mattes, but the mattes are gorgeous, too. They're very powdery, but again, just, Notoriously Morbid just hits different, like, just something about their formula just hits different. So I'm a huge, huge fan. I am going to try to get every palette that I can get my hands on. And I'm so happy one's going to be coming to me pretty soon. So anyway, number eight is the other newest palette in my collection, the Glaminatrix Nocturnal. And definitely got some adept vibes, um, different packaging, but like similar. And I'm pretty sure it's, like, recycled. Um, I think they all, I mean, well, all of these are vegan and cruelty-free for um, what I can remember. I think most of these, most if not all of these brands are vegan and cruelty-free, including their packaging. So, you know, again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But, you know, you could do your own research if you're concerned about that. But I try to stay vegan and cruelty-free um, as much as I can. So... Anyway, this is like grunge beauty. Like, can we see the gorgeousness? So I have these two shades on my lid. I have this shade, and I think the other ones are from the Sandra Rose palette right now on my lid. Um, but yeah, like another one, just chef's kiss. I will continue to buy all their palettes because Kayla is amazing at and she presses her own shadows as well so if she's a one-woman show i think she hired somebody recently to help with shipping and production times but like she does it all on her own so i give her major major kudos while being a mom as well i'm pretty sure so all right number seven is kind of a cheat because technically it's singles and you had an option when ordering some of this collection, um, or well, the collection, you had the option to either do it in a palette or do it in a bundle as just singles. And I chose the palette just because it was easier and it was only a few dollars more. So this is my first time trying this brand and it's Shine by SD. And look at how little it is. It's like the same size as my big ass forehead. Um, I don't know why I just did that, but <laughs> this is also a collab with Lisa Bizarra Volta and then Monica um, Tabor, which is M. Jones um, 5018. These are some of my favorite, 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 favorite multi-chromes in my collection because they are supposed to be custom formulated, and I really don't have too many that are just like these like I might have some that are similar because I have a big collection but these are custom ones that the girls and um Shanique with the owner of Shine by SD worked on to formulate and you can tell like they're beautiful um it was a little pricey for these six shadows but can we talk about reflex like can we talk about shifts like I've seen so many I just got sparkles they fell I've seen so many different, like, 
shots of this palette and it looks different every single time and like to me that's just good as gold so my favorite shade is queen of chaos which is this one and then i think probably you know what all of them but queen of chaos is just gorgeous so um the most gorgeous in the palette so actually i'm gonna put her back because she stays in my drawer with my singles because technically it is singles so she's going right back in there safely because they're again very fragile some formulas are are you know less fragile but like and i just dropped i think some of it and it's like so pretty so anyways number six is gonna be more Odin's Eye, and this is with one of my favorite, favorite YouTubers. This is the Angelica Nyquist and Odin's Eye collab, Hela. Um, she's the goddess of death, but there's a lot in the, um, the mythology about her that is like death and rebirth, like the cycle of life. So look at the packaging. Like, can we just take a moment for the like a moment of silence for the packaging because it just it, it killed it like killed the dead like and then the inside is even more gorgeous because you have all these beautiful colors and like so up my alley with all these greens and grunge and yellowy mustardy pink you know, the couple of pinks that are in there because, like, see, my thing with pink is I like pink with other things. So, this is perfect. Perfect. We have depth. We have multi-chrome. I think multi-chrome. At least a duo-chrome. Beautiful, shiny, shimmery, um, sparkly shades. And then we have this gorgeous soot shade. Um... No, I'm sorry. This is complete. This is set right here because it really, it's like a grayish burgundy, but it's like more gray um, than anything. Like the undertone is more gray. But yeah, this complete shade is, oh my God, like so pretty. But yeah, I love this palette. It's a favorite. It, it's actually probably just going to go right back in front of me on my desk or my vanity. Um where it was before so it's just gonna stay right back there because i'm probably gonna use it very soon so anyway we're in the top five um yeah so number five is another unearthly palette and this one is fall magic now this palette you can definitely see the grunge but it's more of like a grungy autumn well, i mean it is called fall magic but this gives me all the autumn feels that I'm never going to have again because I no longer live in New England. But I can put it on my eyes and, and remember, you know, because I really don't miss the snow. I just miss fall. Spring and fall. And not being 100 degrees <laughs> all the time. But yeah. These shimmers are so pretty. The mattes are so pigmented. Like, they have such a punch. Um, gorgeous warm tones. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. A couple cool tones in there too, but absolutely stunning. All right, so you're going back there, and then we're going to get into another one of my favorite collabs of the year, and this is the Heather Austin palette with Adept coming in at number four. Like, packaging, A++++. We love the leather, um, or faux leather leather because I know this is full leather for sure I know that um, from adept and their packaging just just sleek and just it just looks like just like expensive and it, it's a little pricey but it, like a hundred thousand percent worth it in my opinion because the way they curate their color stories like I'm sorry this palette is freaking gorgeous like all right I'm, I gotta put this guy up close because we need to really like take in the sparkles and the mattes oh my god the mattes like look at that shade scrubs like I'm trying not even to like move and you can still see sparkles passport like video chat huh. 
Like, this palette takes my breath away, like, almost every time I open it. Like, it really does. But the mattes, anyways, that's what I was going to say. The mattes are so pretty. And I know, like, you have you may have heard this before if you've heard about Adept, but, like, the way that their mattes blend out, that's why there's only a few mattes in the palette. Like, or, uh, not that's why, but, like, if there's only a few mattes in the palette, you can actually blend out one shade and make it look like there's more than one shade on there because the gradient that the, these mattes give you is gorgeous. The blend, the gradient, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely stunning. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Absolutely. Anyways, we are at the top three. And this is from one of my favorite brands. This is a brand we haven't seen on this list yet because the other palettes that I have from her I tried before 2022. And this is the one, the only, Blend Bunny Cosmetics. And this is the Dollhouse palette. This palette is everything a neutral lover could want, but with a twist. And let me show you what I mean by that. She has 12 shimmers and 18 mattes. Like, hands down, just the way that Maggie, the owner, nails the undertones, like... The depth, blending out shades, mid-tone, dark shimmers, light shimmers. Everything you could need. And color lovers, too. I know I'm a color lover, and I went bananas over this palette. Like, she really oomphed up her shimmer formula from her last palette where she made her shimmer debut, um, the Surge palette. The first palette she came out with, the Blends palette, was all uh, mattes. I have both of those palettes. I use them all the time. But, like I said, she really put a lot more, I feel like, into these shimmers. Made them a little bit different, a little bit better. Um, in my opinion. And these mattes are the same amazing, amazing quality. Like, you want an easy look? Boom. Pop one of these mattes on. Pop one of these shimmers on. You're out the door. You want a crazy, extravagant look? You can do killer blends with this palette and especially like combining it with um surge or blends or both yes it's a yes and it it happens a lot in this house so yeah anyway top two this is one of the newest palettes in my collection and this is unearthly again <laughs> and this is the all i ever wanted volume two and this is a 20 pan palette full of shimmers that are sparkly, multi-chromatic, duo-chromatic, shifty, be just beautiful. Like, the, the palette just speaks for itself. Like, I, I don't need to, I don't need to introduce these shades. They introduce themselves. They're like, boom, I'm here, bitch. Like, I'm here to take the show. I'm here to, you know, take the shine. I'm in the room, like, seriously, seriously, I love this freaking palette, I know that this is like a, you know, an 80 something dollar palette, but like, it was worth every penny to me, it was, so, another one, 10 out of 10, would recommend if you're interested in a color story like this, and, you know, getting some shimmers in a curated color story, especially if you're not into singles and you just want your stuff in a palette, because I know plenty of people like that that don't want to mess around with Z palettes and singles. Um, I just love everything. But yeah, like if you want your stuff in one place in a palette, easy breezy, you can pair it with some of your favorite mattes or just do an all shimmer look. That is what that palette's all about. Versatility and shine. Anyway. Can we have a drum roll, please? For number one. And I bet you some of you have guessed it because when I got this palette, if you know me, you know I couldn't put it down. And I still can't. And it's still sitting in the same spot since it got here. It stays right here. This is my number one, House of L. 
And I can't believe how much a nine pan, a nine pan palette has captured my attention. Seriously. Like this palette is so pretty. Like I literally want to jump into a, like a fruit salad when I see, and I hate fruit. Like, I'm sorry, I hate fruit. Um, <laughs> but I want to just like, I, I don't, I just, it's beautiful. I, I would just, it's a must. Like, it's a must. For me, it's a must. Uh, you know, I will never tell anybody what they need to buy. You know, that's not my call. But I'm just telling you what I have in my collection that I reach for. This multi-chrome right here, Zor L. Oh my god, I want to use it every time I do my makeup. That one and Alora Zorro. I don't have any other multi-chromes like it. I have similar, but I don't have any multi-chromes like that. Mm -mm. Nope. And, you know, spoiler alert, I haven't even used all the shades in here yet. I've played around with them, but not in, like, a full look. And I still made this palette my number one. So that's saying something. So, that was hard. Yeah, that was difficult. But, you know what? I know these palettes don't have feelings. So, you know, they're all favorites and I try to love on them equally. You know, even though that's tough because I have one face, you know, and two eyeballs. But, I do what I can to spread my, my eyelids around, I guess. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you like this video. I hope you get some ideas, um, you know, being able to see the color stories um, and where I place them in my, um, you know, preference list, whatever you want to call it. Um, and just if you're new to indie makeup, especially, you kind of get to see some of the releases that have captured my attention um, in the last six months. So anyway. I hope you like this video. Um, I would love it if you could subscribe, like, comment, you know, tell me what your favorite palettes of 2022 have been. I would love to know. I would love to hear about what you've been loving. Um, you know, even if it's not indie, it doesn't matter. Like I love makeup period. You know, I've bought plenty of other makeup in my life. That's not indie. And, um, like I said, though, indie does have my heart. So anyway, so thanks for stopping by. It was lovely to have you. Would love to see you again sometime. Until that time comes, you can check out all my other socials. They will be linked below in the description box um, if you fancy. And um, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for today. So toodaloo.